Welcome everybody to the Friar Talk podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Chris Paddock, the 26-man roster, and also we're going to be projecting the Padres opening day lineup. So the 26-man roster segment is going to come out today. The Paddock one will come out tomorrow, and the opening day one will also come out tomorrow. So moving on then to the the 26-man roster, I think there's a few guys that we want to just highlight who made it. For me, catcher Victor Caratini, Luis Compensano. I think that was pretty obvious it was going to happen, but I do think it's notable just because that's not the catchers we expected to make the roster. I think Luis Compensano, a lot of people quite like had the question of, is he going to be the third man on this, on this group? Are they going to keep Austin Nola, Caratini and Campo? They had to keep Campo. They kind of got forced into that one, but really intriguing how he, his season starts off. Uh, then for kind of depth guys, the two guys that I think earned, they earned a roster spot are Jorge Mateo and Tucapita Marcano. Those two guys came in, especially Tucapita. We didn't know that he was going to make the roster coming in. I think he was a long shot. That's what a lot of people said. And he hit 405 and made the roster. So round of applause for him because that is incredibly impressive. And then the only other guys I wanted to bring up, Taylor Williams, Nabil Chrismat, they mo- both made it as the back-end bullpen guys. I thought Reese Neer might make it. Didn't end up happening, but... Isaac, what do you think about this 26-man roster? Do you like the guys that they bring? Is there anyone that they didn't bring up that you thought they should have? No, at least not yet. You know, uh, C.J. Abrams had a good spring training, but he's still pretty young. I wanted him to be, be up, but that was me being unrealistic. But he's young, you know, he's going to be up probably next year. He's a superstar in the making. But, uh, you know, Marcano played himself into this, into this kind of utility role that he's going to be playing. Um, he hit over 400 in spring training, and, you know, nobody else hit over 400 in spring training. This guy stood out amongst everyone else. Every time I watched a spring training game, he was on base. And that's what you want to see out of someone like him, you know, especially when I feel like he would probably be batting seven or eight. And then you got Fernando Manny coming around and the other half of the lineup. Hopefully he's on base. Um, but Mateo, you know, you guys probably know I'm not the biggest Mateo fan, but I'm excited to see how he does. I hope he changes my mind. Um, but you brought up Campusano. I'm so excited for Campy. Like, I really hope that he balls out, and I really hope that he makes the Padres keep him on the roster, even when Austin Nola does come back, because I really want him to be up now. Like, I think he's that he's a great hitter, and I think he's what we need in our lineup. Yeah, I would especially agree with the Campo situation if we had the DH. It's just, it's kind of hard to carry three catchers right now, just because, all right, we have Caratini, He's Darvish's personal catcher. And so yeah, I think we're doing a five man with the current roster that we have. Caratini's definitely catching one out of five days. So then when Nola comes back, are you splitting that two and two? If Nola's doing better than Campy, do we really need to keep Campy up? Oh, he's going to be a bench bat. Then what happens to Tucapita and Mateo? Do we, should we just let Campy go back to the minor leagues and? develop his defense a little more, his pitch calling, his framing, etc. So, you know, those questions will need to be answered later, but I'm really happy with the roster that we have. The only thing that I probably would have changed is I probably would put Reese Neer over Taylor Williams. I'm not the biggest Taylor Williams fan, and I kind of was hoping to see what Reese Neer could do in the majors. Yeah, and Reese, Reese Neer is only 24, I want to say, right now. So he's pretty young. Yeah. I, he was a little bit – he was an exciting – he was an exciting option, but for the Campo stuff, I think this is probably, I guess this is like the biggest element of the Padres early season is can Luis Campensano play so well that he earns the starting catcher role and they have to move Austin Nola where they're forced to, where he's just too good. I mean, ideally that's what you want. You want to have competition you, and you don't want to have competition of, Oh, like back in, you know, 2012 when it was like, Oh God, like who are we going to roll out there? No, it's now it's like, can you outplay this guy? Can you outplay him and, and produce so good that we have to trade a guy that we think is a starting level player? And if that happens, I mean, that's that's best case scenario. You brought up CJ Abrams. Um, I, I I the reason I asked you that, like specifically, Isaac, the way I asked it was because I knew you're gonna say something about CJ. And I just wanted to see if you were if you were upset about that. It does suck that Abrams didn't get called up, but I was not expecting him to get called up. I, I think that Tucapita's definitely earned it. I also like how, hey, if you're going to go into spring training and be a, you know, maybe you can make the roster, you're a long shot, and you hit 405, and then they show, like, yeah, those guys are going to make the roster, 
I think that kind of sets a little bit of a culture where if you're going to succeed, you're going to get an opportunity. Both Jorge Mateo and Tukapita did that this year, this spring, and I'm excited for them especially. Um, but Campo, I think that's the that's the biggest thing this off season. Uh, any, anything else though from you guys on this on this spring training and and how they made the 26 man roster? I know that one other thing I'll add is the bullpen was probably going to be kind of all over the place throughout the year. They did keep nine, which I agree with because you have a lot of injuries and a lot of unproven guys in the pen. But a lot of those guys are going to return from injuries. And if guys don't perform in the bullpen, they're just going to get sent down this year, which is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I brought up to you guys yesterday after, after the bullpen video, if the bullpen guys don't live up to what we think they will, AJ is not afraid to send them off and get someone that who, who's better or who's performing better at that moment. Um, but like Taylor Williams, we probably won't see him on the roster after a couple of days. We know that we got some guys from the, on the IL right now that are key pieces to our bullpen that will be back soon. If you guys haven't checked out our bullpen video, go check that out. It's pretty good. Fun fact, Austin Nolo played shortstop. He probably won't play shortstop for us, but he played shortstop. So you know, that's all I got. So, like they were saying, our bullpen's really interchangeable. We have a lot of guys in the minors that, you know, are pushing the doorsteps of, hey, you know what, I can be a big league arm, give me a shot. So if they don't perform and we have to keep some guys out a little bit longer than we want, there are other guys ready to take their spots. And like Isaac was saying, they can just be traded away for a better arm at the same time. Yeah, so overall, I, I like the 26-man roster. I think it makes sense. The only move that was unexpected was Taylor Williams being included. I think also we didn't talk about McKenzie Gore. Let, let, let's get into that a little bit. I don't think he's quite ready. Um, he didn't look that good. He was also like not to the extent of Chris Paddock, but he also didn't look that great at the at the end of spring. So I think that he's going to go to the minors. He's going to work on some stuff for a bit. I would not be surprised if he's if he's called up in like May or even late April especially if a guy like Chris Paddock or Adrian Morhone struggles. Also, I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on, on Mackenzie Gore, though? Do you think that it was smart to keep him down? Yeah, I definitely think it was smart to keep him down. He didn't have a horrible spring training, but it wasn't exactly like, you know, the ace kind of guy that we expect. And I've seen people ask, why do they bring up Weathers and not Gore? Well, because we're pretty set on Gore becoming a starter. You know, we want him to be a starter in our rotation, whereas Weathers – He's kind of either way, you know, he can be a starter, but for now he's going to be in the bullpen. So I think that was a big reason as to why we brought up Weathers and not Gore, because, you know, we got to make sure Mackenzie Gore is ready to be the starter that we hope he will be. So I definitely think it was smart to keep him down for now. He definitely needs to work on his uh, fastball location. That was the one thing that was hurting him all his spring training, man. You look at him, he was kind of wild with all his fastballs. He was walking people, he couldn't locate, and... It just hurt him in general. Like, I think he had like four walks in his first outing. It was just, it kind of sucked to see him struggle, but hopefully he'll get his command down in the minors. And then maybe a long stretch of April, we'll see him come in, be like the sixth man or a spot start if Morty Hohen needs a little rest or if Paddock struggles, hey, maybe take his spot. I think that definitely could happen. I would not be surprised if, at all if, you know, we look down, it's like April 25th. And they say, all right, Paddock, you're going down to the minors, man. Like, you got to figure your stuff out. I, I do find it really interesting that all of us were pretty on board with Mackenzie Gore. Like, oh, he should make the roster. You know, we should bring him in as a six. And then his, his spring just didn't end that well. And we're like, I think everyone's pretty comfortable. Like, let's send him down. Let's not rush it. I think that's the consensus among us. Um, but it is interesting. Final thing I'll say about the 26-man roster is just a quick question because if we look like three or four years back, I think everyone would agree that maybe not. Okay. Three or four years back. I think uh, Chris Paddock and Adrian Morahone are similarly ranked just in the farm system. And then we go to 2019, 2018. And that changed a lot where Paddock became a top 10 guy and Morahone was second like probably like 50 to 100 most of the time in most rankings i remember i don't know if there's many padres fans that would rather have paddock moving forward than mora hone and so i just wanted to get your guys opinion on that 
Oh, more at home. Like everything tells me more at home, the better pitcher that Paddock is. Because more at home throws 98 consistently as a lefty. Whereas Paddock, like we talked about a lot, fluctuates with his velocity in fastball. Morihon also has good stuff. It was very rare last year where we saw Morihon struggle. And Paddock, you know, we saw him struggle a bunch. And you were talking about earlier in the in the episode how he he states that he has a tough mindset, you know, that like, what's the word I'm looking for? That he can handle adversity. We've only seen that once. It was against the Dodgers when uh, I think Seager hit a leadoff home run and he settled down. But after that, I can't really remember a time where he handled adversity well. So I would take more home. Definitely. I think that's an easy answer. Yeah, me too. Honestly, if, even if you're looking at it, if they were very similar in pitchers, I would just take Mardahone in general because having a lefty that pumps gas like that and can go multiple innings, it's it's not something you see a lot in the league. I mean, who else is there? Josh Hader, but he's a bullpen piece. Kershaw's getting old, but he used to, he used to pump gas in his prime. Sale. And when you look at their stretches of dominance, they compare to almost no other, maybe other than Jacob DeGrom. So I take a lefty with the potential to have like to the sky ceiling than a righty with to the sky ceiling, just because lefties tend to be that much more dominant than righties in this league. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you. I just find it so fascinating that if you go to, you know, early 2019, there's no way anyone that's a Padres fan is saying, oh, yeah, Morhome's better than Paddock. Like, there's no way. And it's just cool that that stuff fluctuates so much. I, I guess for Paddock's, for Paddock's argument, it's not cool for him. But for Morhome, it's definitely something that's that's very promising and exciting. So I just figured we could end the 26-man the roster stuff with that.